Gela Kessler and good morning. We gather as a church today to celebrate Palm Sunday. And we don't have a lot of palm trees on the North Island, but what we do have is a surplus of ferns. So I brought a fern frond from my back garden with me this, this morning uh, to, yeah, to remind me of, yeah, the celebration of Palm Sunday. Um, so I encourage you, uh, wherever you are, to, uh, if you have access to a branch or uh, some kind of some some kind of uh, greenery, uh, please feel free to uh, bring it in to our worship time together, and feel free as we sing uh, our worship songs together to wave your your uh, branches in the air as we gather to celebrate Palm Sunday. I also want to mention that I do have prayer candles lit here um, this morning, so I've lit prayer candles for uh, all of all of our church community and for the wider wider community in the world. Uh, prayers, prayers of hope, prayers for peace, uh, prayers for healing. And so friends, may this time of worship together be a time of refreshment, may it be a time of uplifting, may it be, may it be a time of renewed faith, renewed hearts, and renewed lives. And it's important that we acknowledge that as a church we are, we are seated on the traditional territory of the Quagulth Nation, and also that we are so blessed uh, to be in good relationship with the Guasla Nakwada uh, Nations and the Quetzino Nation, our neighbors on the West Coast. So let us join our hearts and minds together in prayer. Let us pray as one people. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Dear friends in Christ, during Lent, we have been preparing for the celebration of our Lord's Paschal Mystery. On this day, our Lord Jesus Christ entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph. The people welcomed him with palms and shouts of praise. But the path before him led to self-giving, suffering, and death. Today we greet him as our king, although we know his crown is thorns and his throne a cross. We follow him this week from the glory of the palms to the glory of the resurrection by the way of the dark road of suffering and death. United with him in his suffering on the cross, may we share his resurrection in new life. Assist us mercifully with your help, Lord God of our salvation, that we may enter with joy into the celebration of those mighty acts whereby you give us life and immortality. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our opening hymn this morning is from Voices United, hymn number 642, Be Thou My Vision. And I should mention that uh, feel free to follow along in the, in the service. Uh, there should be an outline of the bulletin posted on our website and also on, on YouTube. So let us let us sing together with raised hearts and raised voices.
Let us pray. Eternal God, we come to you with hungry hearts, waiting to be filled. With a sense of your presence, with a touch of your spirit, with new energy for service. Come to us, we pray. Be with us. Touch us. Empower us as your people, that we might worship you and act in the world for Jesus' sake. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning comes from Matthew's Gospel. Matthew chapter 21, beginning in the first verse. <clears throat> when they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethpage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, The Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest heaven. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. And may I speak in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So every night at 7 p.m., something really kind of unexpected happens on our street. And this obviously has spread across the country and around the world. Uh, and it's really kind of, yeah, an unexpected delight to be a part of. Uh, yeah, every, every evening at 7, people gather on their porches and their driveways and ring bells and bang on pots and pans and just make a lot of noise, and all in an act of, of solidarity for our frontline workers, our health workers, uh, those folks who are uh, right in the thick of the battle against this virus and are doing such amazing work to uh, keep, keep us safe and healthy and taking care of those people who are in need of, of care at this time. Uh, yeah, it's just really, a uh, really neat thing to be a part of, and it's something that, yeah, something that uh, I look forward to, and we look forward to uh, every every evening at, at seven o'clock. The rowdiness of a, of, a, of a gathering on our street. Uh, if you, yeah, I, I couldn't I couldn't really imagine, uh, yeah, being a part of something like this. You know, just six months ago, uh, you know, we live on a quiet street, and uh, it's just been, it's been a really neat way to connect, make those connections in our neighborhood and with our, with our neighbors. You know, that, that makes me think of another rowdy gathering that happened 2,000 years ago. And the reason why we're gathered here uh, this morning. And yeah, the, the whole Palm Sunday event it was uh, just, I think, an unexpected, uh, une unexpected and exciting and... Um, this amazing gathering of people who were all brought together to worship and to to uh, were, were curious about who this prophet was, this this uh, this this Messiah, this Jesus who was coming into the city. Uh, there was a, a flurry of excitement, of energy uh, that was surrounding him. Uh, of course, people at this time had been following him in great multitudes and. And people were just so drawn to him and all witnessing all of the amazing things that he'd been doing and saying and teaching, the healings, the miracles, uh, the, the, the wisdom, the love, uh, the compassion that he was, he was showing to the, to the people uh, really galvanized the, 
really galvanized uh, pretty much yeah the whole the whole nation uh, together um, in this in this event and uh, in typical ancient fashion when kings or conquerors would enter into a, a city uh, they would they would be uh, mounted on 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 a horse or, or or a donkey and they would have the retinue of of, of people their uh, their military with them their officials with them and they would enter into the town in great pomp and circumstance and people would gather and 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 um and just be witnessing witnessing this and in in that same in that same line jesus is doing the same same very thing here but uh he is entering the city uh, but as a very different kind of king, a very different kind of, of ruler, a de very different kind of conqueror, a king who would be king in uh, a, a new way, uh, a king who would establish a kingdom that was based on the, the rule of, of God in the lives of the people and would, would challenge the people to... To take to take God seriously in in how they express their faith, how they express their lives, how they would live together in community. Christ came to conquer uh, those forces of, of of darkness, those forces of, of evil, those forces which divide people, which keep people apart from each other, those those forces and systems that oppress and and, and tear people down and destroy lives. Christ came to, to to show and lead his people into a new way, into a new kingdom into a new a, a, a new way of life uh, he is he is a conqueror in that in that fashion you know of course it's ironic that when the nation gathered and the people gathered they were shouting uh, their hosannas uh, uh, have mercy on us uh, Lord have mercy on us uh, which is what hosanna hosanna means uh, and it's so ironic that of course they were gathered in all of this excitement and all of this exuberance um, only, t only in a, for a week later, uh, for the whole, for many, for for many people, the 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 opinion, the tides turned on Jesus, and their ho their their shouts of hosanna turned into shouts of crucify him, crucify him. But I think that points to the complex, the complexities of the human heart and the human spirit, and also the the social and religious uh, dynamics that were happening at that time. And you know, Jesus was a very uh, polarizing figure. And uh, people were obviously drawn to him and, 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 and loved him and supported him, but he also uh, made a lot of enemies and he challenged a lot of the, the systems of power and the, the institutions. And so for sure he had many, many people that were not, were not happy and uh, were out to, you know, were out to, um, yeah, were out to end, end, end his life. That's the great irony of Palm Sunday. Those shouts of joy, those shouts of praise, turn into shouts of hatred and bitterness and anger just a week later. The other thing I just wanted to mention about uh, Palm Sunday is the prophetic nature of Jesus' entry into the city. Uh, Jesus had his face set to Jerusalem for quite a while in his ministry. He, he was his cul The culmination of his, of his whole life, his whole teaching, his whole ministry was... was was set in Jerusalem, and that's where he he was journeying to. And when he enters into the city, after this parade, after this gathering, after all of all of this uh, exuberance, uh, the first place that he goes to, he heads straight to the temple. And I think that is a really significant action on his part. It's a prophetic action where he goes to the temple and. Uh, scholars believe that he went into the court of the Gentiles, and what does he do? He basically boots everyone out who had set up shop, uh, who had set up marketplaces there, who were taking advantage of people, who were uh, who were basically polluting the, the the true the true the true spirit of the temple, of the law, of the prophets. And Jesus was on a, a, a reformation mission to to cleanse and purify the temple and basically uh, to say that um, you know the line needs to be drawn here and uh, there's yeah 
that what's what's happening here is exploiting people and taking advantage of people. And that's not what the temple's about. That's not what God's law is about. That's not what the spirit of the, the Hebrew scriptures are about. And that's not what the spirit of, of the community itself was built upon. You know, the community itself was built upon uh, things like Jubilee and, and things like uh, taking care of the, the refugee and the, the, the alien and the exile, taking care of the widows and the orphans. And so Jesus goes into the temple, clears it out of, of all of these uh, uh, negative and, 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 and polluting influences and wants to say that we need to take our, our faith seriously. We need to take the temple seriously. We need to take uh, God seriously. And so his whole, his, his whole entrance into Jerusalem is heading to, to, to that action, that prophetic action, which he, he does in the, kind of in the, in the vein of the, of the prophets. You know, I think of uh, specifically of the prophet Jeremiah, who was constantly uh, challenging the, the status quo, who was constantly, constantly challenging those in power. And he would, he would uh, have all of these sort of prophetic symbols and actions that he would employ uh, to, to make his point. Uh, for example, at one time he takes a pot and he um, he takes the pot and he smashes the pot in front of uh, a group of people, a group of, of religious leaders, and and basically wants to say that uh, you know this this pot is you know is is the state of what our nation's in, and you know unfortunately because of the way that things have been going, um, judgment is around the corner. And so yeah, so Jeremiah he was constantly using these 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 uh, these different prophetic actions and, and 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 teaching moments to to make his point and to um, to encourage the people to turn and to repent and to to uh, yeah to to be changed and to be to be renewed so so when I think about Jesus and his 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 prophetic action his prophetic nature and when I think about the Palm, this Palm Sunday and the excitement that followed and the exuberance that followed, I think it really says something about our, the human heart and the human spirit and our need to proclaim hosannas, our need, our need to proclaim uh, our praise and worship to God, our higher power, our creator. There's something deep within us, I, I believe, that is crying out to God to have mercy, to uh, 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 something deep within that, that just needs to praise God and, and worship God. And, and to magnify his holy name. Uh, I think that creation, you know, when, when, uh, when, we are, when, we are, when we reflect on creation, and uh, I think it's important that in the story, uh, there's elements of creation that are tied in. You know, we, we hear about the, the branches, the trees, the palms, uh, the, the animals, the donkey, the colt. Um, there is something about Jesus that wants to reestablish a new order and wants to reestablish uh, not only bring healing to humanity but also bring healing to the creation which has been which has been hurt and which has been damaged. And uh, so Jesus is kind of coming in. I think Matthew sees Jesus as a second Adam that has come to reestablish order and uh, order out of chaos and wants to bring that healing. Uh, to to the nations and also to to creation, bring bringing that liberation. And so there's something within us that responds, wants to respond to that and, and cry out with our hosannas, have mercy on us and our praises and our worship. You know, this time that we're in with this COVID nineteen, there's a lot of there's a lot of angst, human angst. There's a lot of anxiety, a lot of worry, a lot of fear. And you know, I tend to think of 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 this time as a formation of all of these dark, dark and gray clouds that uh, are, are gathering around us and over us. And I think that in our human experience, we can experience times where uh, there's clouds of angst that, that, that cover us. And I, I really believe that when we praise God, when we worship God, uh, when we, when we, when we uh, sing, sing praises to his name and, and offer prayers, uh, it's like it's almost like an airplane which takes off and shoots through those clouds and is and is, is sees the the sunshine and the blue skies those the um, 
yeah, there's there's a sort of freedom that we that that we experience this this liberation of of uh, yeah of not letting not letting the the clouds and the grayness and the and the angst to oppress us and to keep us down and and, and to um, yeah to uh, yeah to to silence us. You know, when we, when we, when we praise God, when we worship God, when we offer our prayers, it's like, like that plane shooting out through those, through, uh, through those clouds and into a new expanse of blueness and sunshine and light and levity. And I really believe that when we worship God, when we gather, when we gather together, even if it's gathering together online, we our hearts are, are, are still united. And it's so true, uh, that the church is so much more than a building that we are the church that you and me, uh, us together, our hearts together, we are united as one people, and we are we we are we are the church. And as we as we worship God individually and collectively, uh, it's like we're we're propelled out of out of all of that angst, out of all of that grayness, out of all of that darkness, and into a new realm of hope, a, a new realm of peace, a new realm of light. And um, Palm Sunday reminds us of that. Of course, we know that we will be traveling down a dark road uh, as we enter into Good Friday and into uh, Easter. We're entering into a time of Jesus's passion, his trial, his suffering, his death. Uh, but let us, as we enter into this time, let us remember the importance of offering our praises, the importance of offering our hosannas. Thanks be to God. Amen and amen. And now let us respond in prayer and action as we recite the faith of our baptism, saying, We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope, and life and death, and life beyond death. God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. And I invite you to join me in a prayer of confession as we pray. Oh, most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Compassionate one, hear our prayer. Stretch out your hand in healing love. Create in us a clean heart, O God, and renew your spirit within us. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. I invite you to join me in the singing of our offertory hymn, hymn number 595 in Voices United, We Are Pilgrims. And just wanted to mention too that uh, during this time where we're not able to physically gather, uh, we're still in need of uh, your offerings, your financial support. Uh, so there are ways in which you are able to still give and um, uh, share with, with, uh, with the church. Uh, there's some information on the back of the bulletin about that. And God bless you in your support and in your giving. We are pilgrims on a journey fellow travelers on
and compassion. What an abundance of gifts we have. All these gifts are symbolized in our offering. Let us commit ourselves in service as we worship God with our offering. Amen. And for our prayers of the people and our shared ministry, Church Cycles of Prayer, we pray for the church. We pray for our church leaders, for Bishop Logan, for Reverend Gail Miller. We pray for all of our churches here on the North Island, in Port Hardy, Port Alice, and Quetzino, Port McNeil, Alert Bay, Kinkum Inlet. Uh, we just pray that we may be one through this time of, of this crisis, that we may offer support and solidarity to one another, and that we might witness uh, to be a witness to the world of, of unity and of your great love for your people. We pray for all of those in authority. We pray for our leaders, for our Prime Minister Justin, our Premier John, our Mayor Dennis. We pray for our health, our health uh, officials, uh, our doctors and scientists. We pray for all of those who are um, making decisions to benefit society and guide us through this time of wilderness. We pray for our world. We pray especially for those countries that are facing intense, intense hardships uh, with COVID-19. We pray especially for Italy and Spain, for our neighbors to the south. Uh, we pray for uh, Iran. We pray for countries where there is still civil war and unrest uh, and war. We pray for countries like Syria, uh, Afghanistan. We pray also for our local community. We pray here for the town of Port Hardy. We pray for all of our seniors and elders who are at home alone, who are feeling isolated, uh, who are feeling lonely, cut off. Uh, we just pray that uh, your church will be um, a, support, a support for people through this time. And we just pray, God, that uh, people will know your, your loving presence in their life, your peace and your hope. We pray for all of those in need. We pray for families that are struggling to put food on the table, families that are, uh, have lost employment, that are uncertain where their uh, their um, where their rents is going to come from, where they're how they're going to pay their bills. We pray for all of those who have departed. Uh, pray for those who are left behind to grieve. Um, we just pray for uh, your healing, your healing mercies, and for your your grace and your comfort for 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 all of those who are grieving the loss of loved ones at this time.
And now in the silence of our hearts, or aloud, we pray for those people who we've promised to pray for, people that are close to us, people that are listed in our prayer chains. Amen. For every breath we take, for every beat of our hearts, for every sensation of our bodies, we give you thanks, O God. For the ear that listens, for the hands that caress, for the arms that reach out in love, we give you thanks, O God. For relief from pain, for the tears of shared sorrow, for the laughter of shared joy. We give you thanks, O God, for the freedom to choose, for the ability to love, for the power of hope. We give you thanks, O God, for the presence you reveal to us, for the courage you offer us, for the rest you assure us will be ours. We give you thanks, O God. Amen. And I'd like to share a poem with you uh, by a Canadian poet, uh, Edward Hartley Dewart, who was born in 1828. And the title of the poem is Thou Lead Me On. Thou lead me on, my path is steep, beset with foes I cannot see. Father, thy child in safety keep, my strength is all from thee. When clouds and darkness round me close, and fierce temptations sorely press, hold thou my hand, repel my foes, with calm endurance bless. Forgive my weak, distrustful fears, let thankful love my portion be, till safe from conflicts, doubts, and tears, I rest above with thee. And I'd like to share with you an earth-based blessing from the East African Medical Missionary Sisters. Spirit of God in the clear running water, blowing to the greatness the trees on the hill. Spirit of God in the finger of morning, fill the earth, bring it to birth and blow where you will. Blow, 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 till I be but breath of the Spirit, blowing in me. Down in the meadows the willows are moaning, sheep in the pasture land cannot lie still. Spirit of God, creation is groaning. Fill the earth, bring it to birth, and blow where you will. Blow, 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 till I be but breath of the Spirit blowing in me. Spirit of God, everyone's heart is lonely, watching and waiting and hungry until. Spirit of God, we long that you only fulfill the earth, bring it to birth, and blow where you will. Blow, 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 till I be but breath of the Spirit blowing in me. And now as the beloved daughters and sons of our Heavenly Father who loves us, who cares for us, who knows our joys, knows our sorrows, let us pray that prayer that Jesus himself taught us as we boldly pray in our mother tongues. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose Son was crucified, yet entered into glory, may we, walking in the way of the cross, find it is for us the way of life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And our closing song today, friends, is a chorus called Hosanna. And again, feel free to wave, wave your branches as we sing together.
May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again through these doors. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and the ones you love, now and evermore. Amen. 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 Friends, our service has come to an end. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord and one another. Thanks be to God.